Okay. Uh, I've been getting a lot of comments on uh, comments and questions on uh, the Glock trigger. Where did you get it? How do you install it? What uh, did you have to do? So forth and so forth. Well, here's mine. As you've seen in my video. And uh, I'll give you the rundown on it. So, let's just take that out. Um, take the Glock apart. And uh, see if I got something here to further take it down. Oh, maybe this will work. We'll kind of kind of do the whole uh, this is how I did it type thing. If I can find something. Uh, take this down with. Let's see if maybe this will. Uh, I don't think I got anything to finish pushing that out. Okay, let's see here. Maybe this will help out. Okay. Take this out. Get this broke down for you, and then you can uh, see this uh, real quick. It's it's not hard. I mean, you know, don't let this uh, overwhelm you. It's uh, not really that uh, big of a task. This pin always gives me the most trouble. <sighs> See if I can. Anyway, while I fuck with this, there we go. So let's get the block out, which I've polished. Let's lift the whole unit up out of here. Get this out of the way. So here we go. This is this is what it looks like inside my gun. I probably should wipe this excess oil down, but this is what it looks like. You can see the modification I had to do to it. I had to round. When you get yours, I had to round this off. You don't have to do the sides. Uh, this is just from wear. And then I decided to just polish it up. You can't see it while it's in the gun, though. <clears throat> but what we have is a factory, factory Glock Gen 4. You can tell this is a Gen 4 because of the nub here. Factory Gen 4 trigger bar that's been uh, extremely polished. Now, what you have to do is get yourself a spare Glock trigger with the bar. And you have to, if you can see these two, see if I get my little pointer here. There's a pin here and a pin here. Now, those don't come out. You can't push those out. 
You see they're not on the other side. So what you gotta do is you've got to drill this hole out. You've gotta take this metal pin out of here. What that will do is it will let the trigger bar come off of the factory trigger. Once you do that, this trigger's junk. There's just about no way to, if you don't like the aluminum trigger, there's no way to go back. That's why you should get an extra one. So you got a factory one to stick in if you don't like the aluminum one. You might be able to sell the bar to somebody on eBay, but it's got wiggle on it. It's got a lot of play in it, you know. Once you separate the bar from the trigger, then you're going to take and use one set screw. That's what the that's what this trigger holds the trigger to the bar. The set screw is like a pin. It goes through the trigger, through the bar, and into the other side of the trigger. And there's play. <sighs> okay. Now in your kit, in your kit you're going to get, well at least in my kit, every kit varies, you know, from manufacturer to manufacturer. Whoops, you're going to get a tube of Loctite, which I didn't use. I used actual Loctite. I don't, I don't know if I trust that Loctite. You get a tube of Loctite, a spring, <clears throat> you get uh, a, a pin, in case you don't want to use the set screws, the two set screws, and you get several different colored safeties. Now, this is how the safety sits in the trigger. Well, excuse me, it don't. It sits this way, flat face to the, to the front of your finger, okay? And what happens is this goes in the pocket, okay? The spring goes in this pocket, like so, and it faces, hold on, this is going to sit like this, remember, and if you can, this is hard to do on camera, but see that pocket where the spring sits? It's going to sit like that. inside of the trigger. That way when you press in and you're done shooting, it pops that safety back out. Like so. <clears throat> Once you get it in there, you take the second pin, uh, well in my case set screw, the pins that it comes with, you put the second one through the trigger, through the safety, and out to the other side. Now after I shot this, and I verified that it was actually going to work, I then back the set screws out a little bit, put my own drop of Loctite in, and then threaded the screws forward and backward to work the Loctite into the threads. That's how the install goes. Once you get it installed on the bar, then you just, as normal, you put it, uh, put the unit back in the, in the frame. However, the frame model, last video, what you will need to do is this area, this housing area, 
is going to need opened up. Now imagine that this is a file. This this hex wrench is a file. You have to file both sides like so, and uh, you've got to open this area up. Okay. You've got to make this box just a little bigger here. You don't have to do nothing down here. Just work the sides with a jeweler's file or a precision little diamond file. Once you open that up, you've got to keep testing the fit of this trigger inside that box area. You know, I can't do this on camera. I can't see shit, but <clears throat> you got to keep setting it down in there. And checking its fit, okay? And just move it till you, till you stop the resistance from the sides of the polymer frame to the sides of the trigger. You want, when you're, <clears throat> and you'll have to uh, assemble this all and check the reset. Make sure it resets nice and smooth. There is just vaguely I can feel just vaguely a little resistance but it's it's more than enough this has proven itself to me <clears throat> but you gotta you've got to take a little file and work both sides now you've got to remember something here the factory trigger if I can dig mine back out <clears throat> if you mic if you were to take mics, calipers, you know, whatever, and you were to check the width of this, <clears throat> and the width of even this step here to this side, it is much, much, the trigger is much smaller. I mean, it just falls in. If you look here, you can see it's got a lot of play on each side. <clears throat> It'll have that factory, a lot of play on each side. The factory opening width of this to the width of the trigger, it's only five thou. So, you know, maybe ten because because of the, the molding process. Ten thousandths, you know, is 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 nothing in here. It's nothing. It's ten thousandths might be if you take a sheet of paper and you fold it twice that's that's probably ten thou well it might be six thou but still I mean it's nothing you're not going to ruin anything by opening this with five to ten thou you're not gonna ruin your gun at all even if you want to go back to the factory it's our the factory is already loose in the frame so that's why Salient <clears throat> wants you to send uh, your frame in for fitting because that's essentially what they do is they're going to set this in here. They're going to check it, you know, make sure that it's not binding and it's, and it's resetting freely and they're going to file and fit it to this area here. <clears throat> so that's basically what you do. And, uh, and then, like I said, I took a Dremel and I just kept working this back and forth till I got it to fit. It was tight fitting in. I checked it to make sure it would cam. Then I opened up the width of the frame to just give it that free movement to reset and the trigger to work smoothly. When I pulled the trigger, I wanted to feel what the trigger bar and all this was doing. I didn't want to feel any resistance from the frame. I want to get all the feedback coming through this to the tip of my finger and not feel resistance from the frame. So, <clears throat> so hopefully this helps you out. Um, I think that uh, I think this is a. Uh, it's been pretty good. I might get another one now that I've got that opened up, so that I can keep the black anodizing here. But like I said, when I install this in the gun, 
you don't see, you don't see where this has been worn. You don't see that at all. I mean, you know, you if I can do this on camera, drop that down in there, set this back, put this down in there. I mean, you can't see the little bit of wear that, that has taken place. But, uh, always check, check this at the range. I, <clears throat> I put probably two, I did put about two, 300 rounds and I was having problems with the reset. It wasn't resetting every once in a while. Well, I thought it was something to do with maybe needing to open this up a little bit more come to find out it, it wasn't a problem with the trigger whatsoever because I actually installed a factory trigger I went back to my factory with the <clears throat> with this housing here and I had resetting issues it turned out it was a weak striker spring I had a striker spring uh, fail prematurely I believe prematurely I mean I don't know how long they last I think I've got maybe, tw well, between two and, between 2,000 and 3,000-ish rounds, maybe a little more on this gun. <clears throat> and the striker spring just went. I swapped striker springs. I put this trigger uh, kit back in, and it's went 500 rounds, no problem. So chalk one up to a, a bad uh, striker spring but uh, but that's how you do it that's how you install that's how you install this um, salient clone trigger onto your trigger bar you're gonna have to have an extra <clears throat> you're gonna have to have an extra trigger bar whether you get it with a trigger on it or not it's up to you but but that's what you got to do. So if you have any more questions, then uh, feel free to get a hold of me and uh, we'll go from there. So, all right, you guys have a good day and uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye.